Hi, my name's Leo and I'm a boat builder and a sailor. A few years ago, I bought a very old and quite famous wooden sailing boat for the price of $1. And since then, I've been rebuilding that boat from the keel up with the help of a lot of amazing people. This episode is going to be mostly about the construction of the rudder, though we are going to cover some other things as well. Uh, we're going to talk a lot about the shape of the rudder and various characteristics, but first of all we're going to see Zeal bolting together the big bits of the Purple Heart that he milled and cut to a rough shape in a previous episode. Now you're through. Oh, thank God. Close to the metal, too. Yeah. Got away with it again. <laughs> Is it long enough? Oh yeah, it's perfect. <laughs> So firstly, the basics. Now this is going to be a transom hung tiller operated rudder, uh, which means that it hangs off of the back of the boat. It's gonna be hung on bronze gudgeons and pintles, uh, and it's gonna be operated by a tiller, a lever, rather than a wheel. Now having a large, strong, and effective rudder is hugely important in a capable cruising boat, or any boat really. Uh, having an ineffective rudder can lead to drastic consequences uh, when maneuvering under sail or at close quarters, um, and it can just be really awkward and unpleasant, uh, even at times when it's not a safety issue. Now we can see from historical photos that Tally Ho's rudder was actually enlarged several times since her design, which suggests that the rudder uh, she was designed with was not big or effective enough. Now here's a drawing of the designed rudder and you can see it's a very rounded shape uh, which is actually very inefficient. The, the best shape for a rudder is long and narrow because that prevents tip losses which is when the water instead of going back over the trailing edge of the rudder it goes under or over it and is therefore not actually as effective. You can also see with this rounded shape that a lot of the rudder area is quite far aft in this middle section uh, and that actually adds a lot more leverage it makes it much harder to steer the boat uh, whilst simultaneously being less effective. One other thing with the rudder area is that the lower it is the more effective it is because there's actually more water pressure the lower you go and it is significantly different uh, and you can see on this rudder again there's not a lot of rudder area down here near the bottom of the boat a lot of it's in this area and up higher now i did a lot of research into recommended rudder sizes and ratios and uh, consulted some naval architects and it became clear that Tallyho's original rudder was actually far too small. Now I would have loved to follow the original designs and of course it's a very artistic flowing shape that Albert Strange has drawn but in fact it's a safety issue um, and it's very important to have an effective rudder that's large enough. So I redesigned the rudder and this is what I came up with eventually. As you can see it's a much larger area to this black line here. There's a lot more area down below near the bottom of the boat and it's much more square uh, so there'll be a lot less tip losses. Um, this little pink 
tab on the back is actually going to be a trim tab. Don't worry about that quite yet. Uh, I'm going to explain what a trim tab is and why we need one a bit later. For now, the rudder is going to get a purple heart strip attached to its bottom edge, uh, which will protect the end grain of the main pieces, and Zeal is going to start shaping it. And that is going to be accompanied by some live music this time uh, from some local musicians who came around to the workshop the other day. Black tea. So as you guys know, this entire project is funded just through these YouTube videos and the majority of that comes from really generous donations from people who enjoy them and want to see this project succeed, uh, which is amazing and I'm so grateful. Um, uh, but recently, uh, due to rising costs, I have been doing some uh, integrated ads as well and today Zora and I have got a sponsorship for our lunch. HelloFresh is a subscription service <laughs> that delivers step-by-step -step recipes and fresh, pre-proportioned ingredients right to your door. Mmm, smells great. With HelloFresh, you get seasonal ingredients picked at peak ripeness for quality you can taste. With rising grocery costs, now's the perfect time to get started with HelloFresh. It's way cheaper than eating out and can even be cheaper than grocery shopping, thanks to pre-proportioned ingredients. I love cooking HelloFresh in the ball yard. It's so easy and saves me so much time. HelloFresh has 40 weekly recipes, and you can even customize them by changing your protein or your size. <laughs> Go to HelloFresh.com and use code SAMSONBOATCO60 for 60% off and free shipping. Hey. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, that meal was actually really good. And I'm sure it would have been way better if I'd actually followed the instructions properly. So go to hellofresh.com and use code SAMSONBOATCO60 for 60% off and free shipping. And big thanks to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video. So over the last couple of months, I've been mainly working in the head or the bathroom. Uh, and the last time you checked in with us, uh, I had just finished out the main framing for the structure of the cabinetry. Uh, but uh, recently I was able to start by actually putting the face frame together first for the sink underneath the sink. Uh, and then the other one was for the kind of uh, corner cabinet uh, linen cupboard that we're putting in the corner. Once the frames were finished, I was able to start working on the doors themselves that are gonna fit into each of the cabinets. Under the sink is just gonna be a simple frame and panel door, which eventually will get a, uh, a decorative bead put in uh, around the frame. Uh, for the uh, closet in the corner, we went with a louvered door for ventilation. Once those were fit, I was able to start uh, rounding off the corner post that extends from uh, the sole of the, of the head up until uh, the decking. <laughs> Let's do that again. So, can I just do that last bit? <laughs> After the doors were done, I was able to round that corner post, which kind of ties everything together. Uh, and then I was able to finally get the countertop put in. Eventually, we'll cut a hole in the countertop where the basin will be mounted beneath. What have you been up to? Oh, <laughs> wouldn't you like to know? Uh, <laughs> I've been working on constructing the rudder. Uh, so after making sure the rudder was to a shape that was desirable, 
uh, with our overall pattern and all the purple heart was cut out for the primary part of the rudder stock and bolted together with silicon bronze bolts. Uh, all that was bedded together with uh, Flex. So it's a rubber adhesive, but mostly it's as a bedding. It's not a, we're not using it as a glue because we've got some heavy duty bolts going all the way through it. After everything is assembled, I was able to commit to laying out the final location of that pattern, laid out the profile, cut the profile shape, and the final thing was to cut the propeller aperture. That's good. Hopefully it's the right shape. Yeah. I don't know, you think I had to tune it up a little bit? Yeah, no, it'll be all right. I'm sure the propeller will, <laughs> will make the hole that it needs. Yeah, I don't know why we were worrying about it. You it just, just sharpen the propeller yeah. edges and it'll trim it. That's right. <laughs> that's not fair. That's, that's to help break up the turbulence bubbles. Oh, is it? It's like a golf ball. Oh. Yeah. So figuring out the best shape for the prop aperture was actually more challenging than I expected. Basically a propeller makes a column of moving water directly behind it and at slow speeds when the boat itself isn't moving forwards that column of water needs to be deflected off of the rudder for the boat to be able to turn. If the boat is actually traveling through the water then the entire rudder uh, will have some turning effect but if the boat is pretty much stationary and you're trying to turn the boat, then it's only the part of that column of water that's deflecting off the rudder, which is gonna be effective in turning the boat, and that's called prop wash. Because of this, we wanted to bring the rudder as close to the prop as possible, making that aperture as small as possible, bearing in mind that we needed a minimum distance between the prop and the rudder itself at all rudder angles to prevent excess cavitation of water, which happens when something like the rudder is too close to the moving prop. To get this right, Zeal and I made multiple mock-ups in plywood to test different rudder angles of our proposed prop aperture shape and make sure uh, that they were effective in catching some of that column of water, uh, but not too close to the prop. Eventually that prop aperture will have big chamfers or roundovers uh, cut into its forward edge to make it more hydrodynamic. Uh, but for now, Zeal's gonna be putting in a couple more big bolts into that area, uh, and then he's gonna be working on fairing down the taper. Yeah, so after all of the uh, profile was cut and the propeller aperture was cut, uh, I shaped the taper into the rudder. So that taper is just a straight taper from the rudder stock where it's closest to the boat out to the aft edge or the trailing edge. Uh, so it's a taper from four inches back to the trailing edge where it meets the trim tab of inch and a half. 
And once the trim tab is installed, that is going to taper from an inch and a half down to a quarter inch. So we'll have a very fine trailing edge for the water to be able to flow by and have the minimum amount of turbulence. I think the, the one of the interesting things is the design features of how the original rudder was too small and they added it on. I thought it was really uh, an interesting thing to learn about the history of the boat and to try to not make that same mistake. Uh, so to think a little bit more about that process. Also there's nothing more satisfying than taking a gigantic square timber and milling it down and turning it into a thing. It's just like, ah, I made a thing, <clears throat> there you go. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So as like childish as that sounds, it's, you know, it's a satisfying thing. It's looking really great in here, Nick. Thanks. Yeah, I'm, I'm super excited to see it all come together. It's been a long time coming. Uh -huh. And obviously, uh, there's still some hardware and stuff to go on and some finished work to do, but can you just point out uh, what we've got in here roughly? Yeah, so uh, these are the frame and panel doors. Um, we're gonna have a little decorative bead put in still. Um, uh, I think we're going with brass, brass knobs, brass hardware. Uh, we have a countertop here where the basin will be mounted underneath. Um, we have a couple of beautiful uh, brass faucets that we're going to put in as well. Uh, this is the corner closet with our louver door that's come together. Uh, eventually we'll do uh, the same motif we did in the master bedroom uh, up here as well. Um, yeah, we have our little frame and panel down here. Um, corner posts are rounded. Uh, it's looking good, if I can say so myself. I think you can. You just did. <laughs> <laughs> Now I spoke a while ago about Tally Ho's rudder having a trim tab and I'm going to try and explain what that is and why we're using it. A trim tab is a smaller additional rudder that is separate but linked to the main rudder. So if you imagine this being the main rudder and this is the point where it pivots on the boat, a trim tab might go on its aft edge like this or sometimes can actually be separated. Now trim tabs can be used in different ways. It's probably most common to see trim tabs uh, on power boats uh, where they actually just accentuate the movement of the main rudder and that just increases the steering efficiency uh, and effectiveness at low speeds. But we're using this trim tab in a different way. We're actually using the trim tab not to steer the boat but to steer the rudder. So it acts somewhat independently and if the trim tab 
moves like this, it actually forces the rudder to move the opposite direction because of the flow of water over the trim tab. The purpose of doing that, of using the trim tab to control the rudder, is that you only need a very small amount of force to control the trim tab, uh, much smaller than you would to control the whole rudder. Uh, and that's because it uses the water passing over it to sort of amplify or leverage the movement. Of course, if the boat is stationary, then the trim tab wouldn't do anything, but in that case, nor would the rudder. The reason that that is useful and important is usually uh, in self-steering applications uh, when you're using something like a wind vane to control the steering of a boat. Now, of course, if you're on a long passage and you just have a small crew or you're on your own, you don't want to be sitting at the tiller or at the wheel uh, all day and all night. I mean, you can't. So you have to have some way of steering the boat. With a boat like this, it can take a lot of force to move the main rudder. Uh, and so with a trim tab, uh, you don't need as much force. And so just a small wind vane uh, can control the trim tab based on the angle of the wind. Uh, and that will keep the boat at a constant course to that wind angle. Or in our case, we're probably gonna use a smaller electric or hydraulic ram with a autopilot system, which will control the trim tab and therefore the rudder and therefore the direction of the boat uh, based on a compass heading. Now it is of course possible to use a bigger hydraulic ram or cable systems, especially if you're using a wheel uh, and actually just control the rudder itself mechanically with an automated system, uh, but that does take up a lot of power. Uh, and if you're on a sailboat on long passages, uh, generally you're trying not to use too much power. Uh, and there's a, an aspect of redundancy there as well uh, if your main power system goes down or something like that. So with this system, it can use a very small amount of power uh, and it can also be hooked up to a wind vane, which I really like. There are other advantages of using trim tabs as well. They can actually be locked into set positions to help offset a weather helm if the boat can't be balanced purely uh, by the sails. Uh, and basically what that means is that uh, depending on your sail configuration and the direction of the wind relative to the boat, the boat might always want to turn a certain direction uh, into or away from the wind. Uh, and to counteract that, you might have to have uh, some pressure on the, on the tiller, on the steering, on the rudder uh, to keep the boat on course. Uh, and with a trim tab, you could lock it in one direction and that would just help offset that. Now the mechanics of how the trim tab is controlled, the linkage system, the feedback system uh, is really interesting, uh, but quite complex in a way uh, and difficult to get your head around. It's very difficult to explain in just a couple of minutes. So we might get really deep into that uh, in another video soon uh, when we show the construction of the trim tab as well. Um, but for now, I just want to emphasize that this is a tried and tested system. It's a system which I've sailed with on uh, many different boats. It's not a common system. It's most often found on boats set up for single-handed sailing, but it can work remarkably well. And I'm really excited to use this system on Tally Ho. Well, that's almost all we've got time for right now. Really cool to see the rudder coming together. Uh, the head cabinetry is also looking beautiful uh, and all the other jobs which are going on uh, are also really exciting. And as always, there's a million different things going on, but only so much I can fit into each video. I do try to post some updates and photos of some of the other projects in between videos on my Patreon page. And there's links to that right here and in the video description. But for now, thanks a lot for watching and a massive, massive thank you to everyone who has donated or otherwise supported this project it does make a huge difference it means that we're able to keep on doing this work and i'm able to keep on making and editing these videos so i really really appreciate it and i'll see you next time cheers We here at Samson Boko recommend a zero clearance insert for cutting sweet potatoes on your Powermatic bandsaw. <laughs>